You probably know the story of how Devadatta tried to kill the Buddha. He rolled a rock down the mountain, hoping to crush the Buddha. Fortunately, the rock hit another rock that diverted it, but still a sliver broke off from the, main, the big rock and pierced the Buddha's foot. It caused him a lot of pain. The texts tell us how after the sliver was removed, the Buddha went to lie down and rest. And Mara came to taunt him, accusing him of moping and being depressed, and not facing pain like a real Buddha, who apparently should get up and walk around even though he was in a lot of pain. And the Buddha said, I'm not moping. I'm lying down out of sympathy for all beings. We can take two lessons from that. The first is that when the body is sick, you look after it. You don't try to prove that you're able to deal with pain to the extent that you abuse the body. Lying down out of sympathy, the Buddha was keeping his strength, preserving his strength, so it could help other beings. And at the same time, that accusation that Buddhas shouldn't suffer pain. I know some people who believe that anyone who's spiritually advanced should not have disease, should not have pain. And that's totally diluted. Some diseases come from present karma, but a lot of them come from past karma. And everybody, no matter how awakened, has past karma. So it's simply a fact of life. Even awakened beings, fully awakened beings, will face disease, they'll face pain. And Buddha himself points this out. There's a difference between the ordinary person who suffers from pain and the enlightened person who suffers from pain. And the difference is that the ordinary person shoots him or herself with extra arrows. The physical pain is one arrow which is actually manageable. It's all those extra arrows. When we get upset, we get distraught, worried about the body. That causes suffering not only to the mind, but also adds pain to the body. It's our responsibility when we're sick or when we're injured is to look after the body as much as necessary, but to look at primarily after the mind, realizing that your experience right now is a combination of past karma and present karma. And you can't do much about the past karma, but you do have a lot of control over your present karma if you train the mind. The more trained the mind is, the more control you have over how you're going to actually be experiencing that past karma. And part of it is to realize that your past karma doesn't present you just with one thing at a time. You've got lots of potentials. There are potentials for pain in the body, and there are also potentials for pleasure. And you have the choice of what you're going to focus on and how you're going to focus on it. If you're going to focus on the pain. It's useful to po focus on it as if it's going away, going away, going away. The pain may be there and it may be coming repeatedly, but each time it comes it's going away, going away, going away. An image I found useful is think of yourself sitting in one of those old station wagons that had a backward-facing seat. And as you see things coming past you on either side of the road, they're actually going away. You've got your back to the front of the car. And it's a very different experience from sitting in the front facing forward. So try to look at the pain as moments, moments, moments. And each time you see a moment of pain, it's passing away, passing away. That gets you out of the line of fire. And 
you can also be careful about how you think about the past and the future of the pain. In other words, how long you've been experiencing a particular pain and how much longer you may be experiencing it, or what this pain may mean in terms of how much longer you're going to live, or whether the injury may be permanent or temporary. Put those things aside. Those are extra arrows. We can think of them as extra weights. They just weigh down the present moment. So the mind is, is carrying more than it can bear. But at the same time, realize that you don't have to be focusing on the pain all the time. And it's good to try to create a much larger state of mind that's not overwhelmed or overcome by the pain. Think of the Buddha's image of the lump of salt. You've got a lump of salt and you put it in a cup of water. You can't drink the water because it's too salty. But if you put it into a large, clean river, there's so much water that the salt hardly makes a difference. And the Buddha said it in the same way, when past karma comes, the results of bad past karma, if you make your state of mind unlimited, immeasurable, You hardly notice the results of the past bad karma. Of course, the immeasurable state of mind that has to do with developing thoughts of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity for all beings. And it's a useful exercise when you're suffering from pain, because it gets you out of your individual narrative. It reminds you of the larger context. One is if you have been injured, you don't want to bear any ill will for the person who injured you. And if you injure yourself, it's the same thing. You don't want to bear any ill will for yourself. And think of how you would like all beings to be happy. That's a nice thought to bear in mind. It makes your mind much larger. Think of all the different kinds of beings there are. You can think of them in terms of how you relate to them, the people you like, the people you're neutral about, the people you don't like, people you don't know. You can think of them in terms of different kinds of beings there are human beings, there are devas, there are animals, there are beings in hell. There are noble ones, there are ones who are not yet noble ones, there are, there are beings that are looking for a place to be born. And think about beings all the way out to eternity. It's good to think about eternity a couple times a day. Like that character in the, through the looking glass who liked to think of two or three impossible things before breakfast just as a mental exercise. We'll try to think about eternity every day. It airs out the mind, expands the mind. And if you developed thoughts of goodwill, then you think about all those beings out there who are suffering. You're not the only one who's suffering right now. There's a lot of suffering going around all over the world. And you want to have compassion for all those beings who are suffering. As for the beings who are happy right now or enjoying good fortune, you don't want to resent them. The fact that they're enjoying good fortune right now doesn't make your pain harder to bear. Remember that we're all trading places. The Buddha once said, you see someone who's really, really miserable. And remember, you've been there. See someone who's enjoying extremes of wealth and power. You've been there as well. It helps to depersonalize the whole issue of pleasure and pain. As John Leo once said, pleasure and pain, think of them as words that people say in jest. You want a state of mind that's beyond them. And 
And finally, there's equanimity. A traditional way of developing equanimity is to think about karma. Again, that we all have good karma, we all have bad karma. And if bad karma is bearing fruit right now, remember, that's not the only thing you have in your past. There are lots of good potentials there as well. You don't want to get worked up about the fact that at the moment you're suffering from the, the fruiting of bad karma, because it's going to end, and there'll be good karma bearing fruit at some point. And it's a question whether it's going to be soon or a long time away. Just put that one aside. Just realize that we all have these things. And as you think of that larger perspective, it helps develop a sense of sangwega. That even when it gets good again, then it's going to get bad again. And it's going to get good again and bad again. It reminds you that you really want to go beyond all this. You want to develop a state of mind that's not suffering, not clambering after pleasure or running away from pain. This is one of the reasons we're trying to develop a centered state of mind. And from that centered state of mind, really look into how is it that the mind creates suffering, not only out of pain, but also out of pleasure. So as you're facing pain or illness or injury, remember that's not the only thing your past karma has to offer. There are other potentials as well. It's like a field with lots of different seeds, and you have the choice as to which seed you want to water. And although the pain may be insistent, you can be even more insistent. The pain may seem large, but you can make your mind larger. And a good way to do that is to develop these thoughts of infinite goodwill, infinite compassion, infinite empathetic joy, and infinite equanimity. They're the large river of clear water that can dissolve away the salt of the pain and take away the sting not only the pain, but also the different narratives that may come up in the mind around how you don't like where this pain is taking you, you don't like where the disease is taking you. You can put those aside. Keep the bigger picture in mind. And let the smaller pictures just slough away. 